afternoon, everyone. I know you have all been anxiously awaiting information on how the funding process will work for LA4 this year, and hopefully we'll be able to answer most of your questions today. Today we're going to discuss LA4 funding as a whole and how it's determined and also how it's broken down between funding sources. And we'll also share with you the new process for claiming your LA4 funds in 2019-2020 and some additional assurance language that will go along with that. So the total amount of funding appropriated for LA4 in 2019-2020 is $78,290,520. And this is funded using two different funding sources, TANF and state general funds. The total TANF uh, allocation for 2019-2020 is almost $45 million, as you can see on your screen. And the state general funds, which were appropriated in two different rounds, um, total 33358370 And so the way that's broken down is the first appropriation was in the amount of $29,358,370. And then the second round, which was to offset the loss of funding due to the end of the pre-K expansion grant, gave LA4 an additional $4 million. So how is LA4 funding determined? Lead agencies submit a coordinated funding request every year where LEAs can apply for seats through LA4 LA um, through the coordinated funding request. Seats are then awarded based on the number of children that they anticipate serving during the school year, the number of children they served the previous year, and the availability of funds. Seats are funded in the amount of $45.80 per child attending the six hour instructional day for the duration of the 10 month school year. Based on October enrollment for the six hour instructional program, allocations may be amended if the program does not fill 100% of their allocated number of seats. Programs serving more than their allocated number of students may be awarded supplemental funds if these funds are available. So how will the payment process look moving forward? LA4 will now be paid on a per child basis instead of being reimbursed for expenses. This will allow LEAs to extend funds without requiring prior approval of allowable expenses. Please note, however, that LEAs will still have to report expenditure data on the annual financial report. What this means for you is that you will no longer submit a budget or request your reimbursement via EGMS. I want to make sure we're being really clear about this. There will be no budget requirement in EGMS for LA4. You will, however, need to submit detailed enrollment and attendance information for only your LA4 children monthly via the LA4 attendance reporting and payment claim form. You will not have to submit information for all your four-year-olds monthly via the enrollment reporting website as you have done in the past. I want to repeat that so everybody understands. You will not be required to submit enrollment and attendance information on the enrollment reporting website as you have done in the past. LA4 payments will be made quarterly following complete submission of monthly enrollment and attendance reports. You will still sign the standard pre-K program assurances that are submitted annually. These are usually signed in EGMS. You will now receive an assurances document that should be signed electronically and returned to me. In addition to the standard assurances, we have some added language um, that go along with this new payment process. LEAs will ensure that accurate enrollment and attendance records are kept for each child. LEAs will submit monthly enrollment and attendance reports for each child funded with LA4 funds by the date outlined in the reporting timelines, which will be sent to you. Failure to submit timely data will result in a forfeiture of payment that cannot be recouped in subsequent months. So if you fail to submit your monthly attendance and enrollment report, we cannot guarantee that you will receive payment for that month. LEAs will acknowledge that the monthly per child rate is payable contingent on the child attending 74% of the scheduled 
school calendar days in a month. For children who do not meet the 74% requirement, payments will be made based on funding availability. And it should be noted that excused absences will not be calculated against a child's monthly attendance percentage. If a child has an excusable absence with documentation of assigned doctor's excuse, then those days are not counted as absences for payment purposes. And we are going to um, default back to your district policy on what defines an excused absence. So a doctor's excuse is always preferred, but if your district has, has policies that allow funeral absences, um, things like that to be excused, then we will default to your district policy. So this is kind of what you've all been waiting for. This is how you will submit your uh, enrollment and attendance information. You will receive a Google spreadsheet from us that has each month already formatted. For our example today, we will use the month of December. So first, you will enter the name of your district or LEA and the name of the person completing the form. Then you will calculate the total number of scheduled school days. This number will be entered in the cell labeled total attendee days to the right of your spreadsheet. School calendars may be requested for monitoring and audit purposes. Purposes. The required number of days that a child must attend will calculate for you automatically. Any days that the school or district is closed, holidays, weather days, etc., must be identified with a C. As you can see in our example, we have identified the closure days for this LEA as December 23rd through 31st. These days would not be included, included in your total attendee days. You should then also complete the SIS information and the child name information. Please do not enter the child's whole name. In order to protect the privacy of these children, we are asking that you only enter their first initial and the last two, first two letters of their last name. Let me say that again. Please only enter their first initial and the first two letters of their last name. I know on the example we have just first initials, um, but we are asking you to do first initial of their first name and the first two initials of their last name. So then you'll think of this as a roll book. Each day the child is present is going to be marked with a one. Days when the child is absent and this absent absence is unexcused should, by, should be identified with a zero. Any days that the child presents a doctor's excuse or any absence that your district policy deems as excused should be marked, they should be marked present and that day highlighted in yellow so that it can be identified in the monitoring process. All excuses should be kept on file for monitoring and audit purposes. Children with late start dates must attend 74% of their scheduled school days. So for example, if you look at um, this number 4444, Mary S. starts school on December 9th. She must attend seven days to meet the requirements. Days a child is not enrolled should be identified with a dash or hyphen. So for Mary, December 2nd through 6th should be marked with a hyphen or dash. These will need to be adjusted manually and I will work closely with you on this. Children who disenroll for any reason must meet the full 74% of the scheduled school days in order to be eligible for payment. So for example, this number five, Johnny's family relocates. His last day of school is December 10th. Since he only attended seven days or 47%, he does not meet the requirement. However, on this number six, Charles B's last day was December 17th. He attended 12 days, meeting the requirement and is eligible for payment. You will also see at the bottom of each tab that the totals calculate for you, providing you with the total of your payment each month prior to any manual adjustments that may be required, 
as well as a certification to be signed by the appropriate authority within each LEA. That signature is what will indicate that your uh, report has been submitted for that month. So when we go in to pull the data, if there is no signature on the form, we will consider this report not submitted. An additional guidance will be sent to you um, for how to complete this form. So these are just some things to remember that we just went over. Um, when you're completing the form, these are kind of the bullet points that tell you exactly how to do it for future reference. And as I mentioned, additional guidance will be sent to you. So monitoring. Previously, we want to make sure everybody understands that previously, budgets and expenditures were reviewed for expense allowability, whether or not what you were using your funds on was allowable or unallowable. We will no longer be looking at allowability. So for this year, enrollment and attendance reports will be monitored for eligibility. This means that you must provide accurate information about each child so that monitors can verify the child's eligibility for LA4 funding, as well as make sure they're meeting the attendance requirements. Information regarding specific documentation and submission requirements will be sent to you from the Office of Statewide Monitoring. So that sums up what your payment and um, reporting process will look like for this year. Um, some next steps, the department will send out to you your Google Docs to start recording your LA4 attendance. The first due date of this report will be September 6, 2019. We know that's right around the corner and the guidance is still being developed and finalized. In addition, it is still being approved by the TANF agency. And so if we look, if it looks like it's going to get too close to that deadline before we're able to get this out to you, that deadline will be extended. So don't worry about that. Um, payments will be made quarterly. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can direct them to me at my email address, which is on your screen. And we will send out um, with the guidance an FAQ document that will answer all of the questions that we will receive in the chat box. Um, and if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to email me. It is critical that the data we receive is accurate and that it's received timely um, so that we can continue to um, ensure payments for these children. So if you have any questions or concerns about how to complete your report, please, please reach out to one of us. Um, you can email me directly and we will be happy to walk through it with you. Thanks, everybody.